Hello, hello, hello. It's Wednesday, it's Sunday at the following Vintage Improv Festival's weekly show with a wonderful, wonderful acts, uh, largely, largely done by people over 50, but we are uh, happy to say that we'll let anybody do something with us. As long as you love working with people over 50, you're welcome to participate in anything. The Vintage Improv Festival does. First up tonight, we have Sonic Boom Boom. They're here every fourth Sunday, same time. Second up uh, at 8.30 is House Team Messing. At 9 is Menage Duo, And at 9.30 is House Team Merit. Right now, we're going to start with uh, um, our House Team Sonic Boom Boom. And up is going to come the first monologist, and I am going to give him what his inspiration is. Your inspiration is lemonade. Uh, lemonade. So I used to be a bartender. You you wouldn't you wouldn't know that by looking at me, because usually you think of bartenders with you know like you know like tats and you know really suave and debonair, but back. Back in the day, we had this packaged whiskey sour mix. And it was just like, I, you know, lemon and sugar and water wasn't in the mix. But I would put the water into the mix, shake it up into these big gallon containers. I was about, you know, 21 years old at the time. And and I was in college. And, and I was, you know, was kind of glib. I was funnier than I am now, for those of you who are wondering, was I ever funny? And... And I would, I would love to just like right in front of the crowd. I can't do it because I don't have an ice cube here. But I would throw the ice cube up into the air and wait and catch it in the glass. And it was like, and that was amazing. And I, I can't juggle. And it's not a skill set that I have. But I was able to do that. Except periodically, the ice cube would hit the glass at such an angle that the glass would crack. And I wasn't real careful. The glass was over the ice that I used to make drinks later in the night. So it really created a, a an, an awkward situation where somebody would go like, my, my gum is bleeding. And I, of course, I assured them that it was nothing, okay? And just gave them some cotton and a you know piece of ice. And I checked that one more carefully. Uh, but the, the, the evolution of that then became years later when I was, you know, less funny, less buff, um, gave up the throwing it up in the air and stuff like that. I would tend bar at different locations. I tended bar uh, first on Long Island, okay, at a place called the Sixpence on Broadway. It was a very posh town. And uh, yeah, so that reminds me of I stepped in there one evening. I was off shift and I was on a first date with a young lady. And uh, I had gone off to, to the restroom and I came back and the seat next to her was empty. And I, I walked up to her in this kind of, you know, glib way that I'd like to think that I have, but mm, you'll decide. And I said to her, I said, excuse me, are you taken? And she said, yes, frequently. I, I didn't quite know what to do with that because I was very much a virgin at that time, but I stopped being glib with her. So I, I was making, um, I learned how to make an Arnold Palmer working at the Douglas and Golf Course about six years later up on the Long Island Expressway. And that was a mixture of lemonade and beer. And I will tell you, those really led to some very interesting conversations. Again, I was progressively less glib and hang around. You'll see yet more of what I mean. I really hope someday they'll name a drink after me. You know, something with uh, cranberries and uh, tequila. They'll call it the the hairy slipper. Your name is Harry Slipper. 
Now I know. Oh, well. <laughs> I understand why you've been so evasive, Harry. Yeah, well, you have a couple of hairy slippers, and you'll be <laughs> feeling pretty good. I like that. Well, I, you know, uh, naming things after people. I, I would name. I would name. I think I would name my dog Harry. I like that name. Well, you have me. I'm Harry, and we have each other. That's true. Why do I need a dog? I've got you, Harry. And I got you, Linda. But you don't really like to drink. At least not that I've seen. Right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I don't like to drink, so I can't really enjoy your hairy slipper drink. <laughs> maybe maybe we could uh maybe we could go to disney world and you know i don't know i kind of liked it when you said i don't think i could enjoy your hairy slipper <laughs> i meant your drink <laughs> i know what you meant but Thank i you. just like to hear you say things like that ah uh... Well, I, I like spending time with you two and learning your little secrets, like the Harry Slipper drink. And you know I like Disney. So, yeah, we could, yeah. we've could. we got a whole future ahead of us. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, we'll have to make an appointment with Mickey Mouse and we'll all get together and maybe order a Harry Slipper all together. That would be a fun way to have a Harry Slipper. I know, as opposed to a Mickey Flynn or whatever the Mickey is. At or a Michael Shiverdecker or... Um... Once again, I, I said something and I thought I was... I thought I was going to be up there alone forever. Thank you. No, I, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you the whole way. I'm never going to leave your side. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Benny, you're my bestest friend ever. Mark, that, that's, that's a little bit more intimate than, than I'm ready for, Mark. I, I mean, I'd like that you got my back and that you didn't leave me alone, but not leaving me forever. Oh. And I'm, I'm not going to leave you while you're sleeping. I'm not going to let you sleep alone either. That's not good. It's not in your best interest. I'm just, I'm a heavy snorer. I mean, I, I, I do that when I'm walking around, okay, and driving. And you won't sleep with my snoring. And, and you wouldn't be any use to me. Beats because I won't sleep? Oh, because I'll be too tired. I promise. I promise. You don't understand how devoted to you I am. You don't understand how much you're freaking me out. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but my devotion knows no bounds. Yeah, so... This whole thing about bounds is one of those things that makes me nervous about going to sleep and you're going to be with me all this time. And then you say bound and I'm going, am I going to be able to, you know, go to the, you know, bathroom at night or are you going to have to unlock me to, it's really. Unlock you. That's a good idea. No, I, I get you. Okay. Maybe there does need to be some boundaries. Um, but you could go to the bathroom. I'll just stay outside the door. I'm telling you, when I, when I go late at, late at night, okay, it's not a sound that you want to even hear once, never mind twice. It, it, this full-time stalking thing that you're doing is a statement of your devotion I don't know. I, I'd really like to see this repackaged in a way that's a little bit. I don't know. It's got. A, it's a little looser. 
I'll stay, okay, I'll stay back 10 feet. I won't sleep in the same bed. I will sleep on the floor. You don't understand. I, I just got to make sure you're all right. All the time. Every minute. So if you sleep on the floor and I get up at night, you'll be good with me walking all over you. <laughs> Oh, you mean literally? Um, well, yeah, yeah, I mean literally. I want to know what the limits are here. This is intense. Life is so hard. It takes a lot of energy. It, it, it is, but it, I got to tell you, when the inflatable dolls ran out of air and you said we should just go out in front of the store and pretend, the customers are coming in thick as thieves. It's working. Oh, thank goodness. Good ideas do pay off sometimes. Matilda, you, you, you have a history of spectacular suggestions, and, and we would not have this, you know, major biscuit, chocolate chip, cookie factory with people bursting out at the seams. It's, it's all you, Matilda. Thank you, Greg. Uh, well, you know, actually, this is, serves two purposes after eating all that ice cream every day. Uh, it's a good way to, you know, work it off, get rid of some of that extra ice cream layer on my arm. I get it, but I'm, I'm concerned that all the people coming into the store, like with all your, the flaw in your planning is, is that they're going to burst the store at the seams and the storefront will explode, will be out of business. You think my plan is a bad plan? Elements of your plan suck a lot. It could cause an explosion. I, I never even thought about that. Only you would think about that, Greg. You're going to go down in infamy as, as the cookie bomber. It's oh, well, that could be your 15 minutes of fame. Well. <laughs> I guess, let's keep bringing the crowds in then. I'm good. <laughs> um, I just- Jell Jello. Jello. J-E-L-L-O. Well, um, that reminds me of working at a grocery store growing up as a kid uh, from about 15 years old to, well, uh, 18. I worked at a small town grocery store and did all of the, not all of the stocking, but it was pretty small. And I remember putting up Jell-O and um, uh, a lot of other products um, but you didn't just do uh, uh, stocking. You also worked the register. And uh, this was a small mountain town in Colorado. So at times, uh, especially during the winter time, there'd be no one in the store except for probably myself and, and the manager. And I remember I got bored one night and um, up around the cash register were these little... Um, uh, tear gas, squirter, aerosol cans, uh, not for sale. I guess they were there in case the store was going to get robbed or something like that. But um, I started uh, just looking at them, again, being bored. And I remember I, I thought I just wanted to see what it would look like when it sprayed. And so I took it and I sprayed it. 
Um, and um, I, I didn't get any on myself, but I sprayed it right in front of the door that was the entrance to the store. And just after I sprayed it, this woman walks in, which I knew she was um, a regular customer. And uh, she walked in right through this spray, just like at those aerosol or those perfume places in, in a department store. She just walked through the cloud of kind of tear gas. And she started coughing and kind of trying to clear her throat. And she didn't kind of know what happened. And she turned to me and she goes, Tom, what, what, what have you been doing? Have you been smoking in here? And of course, I just played completely dumb and said, no, no, I, I don't smoke. I'm, I'm uh, too young to do that. I don't do that. But she just went on coughing and <laughs> tearing up all the way to the back of the store. Um, I, I, and, and then the manager came up and he also started to, to tear up. And I did tell him what I was doing. Luckily, uh, he, he laughed and didn't fire me. <laughs> Your huevos rancheros with those habanero peppers. Can't drink water. That won't solve the problem. <laughs> Mabel, there's only one thing that's going to solve the problem. I, I am clueless. I, I, you've lost your voice. I'm anxious to hear the problem, the solution to the problem. <laughs> oh, Barnaby, you've got the solution. Share it with me. I'm desperate. I'm listening. I'm trying to hear what you're saying. Please, I've got to know. <laughs> No help at all. <laughs> well, well, if, I mean, well if, maybe we could, uh, if, I don't know, can't use water. What else? I don't know. It's like, uh, Eat something. Okay, eat something. Yeah, uh, eat something. Yeah, that's the solution. Eat something. Uh, uh, cereal. No. Oh, uh, <laughs> Barnaby. <laughs> this has got to be. <laughs> oh, your mind is exploding. I don't know. Cow brains. You want to see cow brains? I don't have any. Look at the refrigerator. No, no. A tall, handsome man. <laughs> you know. You know. You know, Barney, I, I'm going to marry her. She's just real hot, and I want you to be my best man. Zeke, I'm, I'm honored that, you're, that you've asked me to be your best man. We go back. We go back. But my divorce for her isn't complete yet, asshole. Well, I detect a little bit of animosity there, but um, you're divorcing her, so I should 
be in the clear. And I thought it would be a perfect arrangement, you being the best man, kind of like, you know, turning over the reins, so to speak. Uh, but wait. Great. That's great. I, I, I like the way you did that, the way like I paid for the horseback riding lesson. That's how you met her. You rolled this whole thing back. You played me for a fool. I, 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 I get it, and that you that you asked me to be the best man is just like. <sighs> no, 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 Barney, you're you're right. I, I should have never used uh, uh, that that horse related metaphor. Uh, it's just a figure of speech. Uh -huh. but, um, no, no disrespect to her. I mean. I, and, and then you're going to do the whole thing about how she's going to have a, a bridal veil. And again, no disrespect. Um, <laughs> well, it is just you and me here, so. Uh. And, and I, don't, I don't count for anything because you've already backstabbed me while I'm still married to her. And you're planning on moving in and using my closet because she will get the house. Well, Barney, I, if you're really dead set against this, I, I, can, I can wait. Well, actually, I, I mean, I, I'm not dead set against you marrying her because I would, I'd love for you to suffer the way I have. But she's so hot. She's she's gorgeous. She's yeah, 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 yeah. Zeke, you know, payback is just around the corner. So I would I would love to be the best man and listen to you say I do, because you'll be saying that for many many years. I, I'm. I, I'm trying to listen to you, Barney. I, I, I may, maybe you, maybe you're right. Maybe I should think about this again. You, no, I no, I should, I should definitely be the best man. I mean, I, you know, it, 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 it'd be, you know, an honor, and it'll, it'll help me with my therapeutic process of, you know, letting go of my desire to kill one of you. Okay, so. Hmm. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you for being here for me, Jonathan. Brenda, look, he, he's no good for you. You you just just don't let there's other fish in the sea. There's other peas in the pod. There's there's other um chicken in the pots or something. I don't know. But I hate to see you this way. There, there are other fish in the sea. Jonathan, Jonathan, Jonathan. Brenda. Oh, Jonathan. Brenda. Jonathan. Brenda. Jonathan. Now, I, boy, you sure change quick. I uh, just got an idea, Jonathan. Okay, well, I, I'm glad to see you feeling better. I'm feeling a lot better. Well, that, that's great, Brenda. I was really worried about you there for a while. Thank you for always being there for me, Jonathan. Well, what are friends for? I am so grateful. What would I do, really, without you? Never thought about that. Well, you don't need to worry from my standpoint, because I'll always be your friend. Oh. oh, yes. Yes. Well, that's a very exciting. <laughs> I'm glad you're so excited about that, boy. I'm very excited, Jonathan. I can't believe how... <laughs> Quickly, you changed your mood, um, but it's good. 
It's good. Oh, I, I, I'm glad you said that. I, that's important to me, that you think it's good. Well, you're, you're being awful nice to me, Brenda. And you're always there for me, Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan. Well, I, I think my work is done here. So, um, will I see you tomorrow? No, no way. You're not going to go now. Well, I was planning to. Uh, Why need you? you? You still need some support or? Yes. Yes, I want you to be here forever. You, you mean that figuratively, right? Well, I guess you can go to the bathroom once in a while. But you want to be with me forever? Yes. Oh. Oh. You're not smiling. Oh. Well, it is kind of a shock. I mean, we're we're friends, and <laughs> please, please, please. please, ice cream. Ice cream. Uh, it makes it makes me think of the fair. And I um uh, because I taught school, <clears throat> I had summers off. And so I started working at the fair selling balloons and dressing in a clown suit in McLean County, Illinois, the middle of corn country, corn and bean country. And so there was a lot of livestock sh showing and the carnies were, uh, well, really the carnies were around my sand. And uh, it, it was July, August when I was working different fairs and the temperatures would get to three digit <laughs> temperatures. So that when I worked in Peoria, Illinois, uh, in this clown suit in three digit <laughs> temperatures, the ice man stopped at my station regularly and I bought a big bag of ice and I filled all of my clown suit pockets so that I could survive the, the hot midday in, in Peoria. It was a long festival or fair. It was an 11 day fair. So <clears throat> I had to really attend to staying healthy and, and safe. And uh, Illinois is, uh, I, and that part of Illinois was also called Tornado Alley. So I was standing there one day and uh, it was raining and someone stepped into the midway and looked up and said, hey, there's a tornado. And there was, there was a glass man across from me so I, ran from my stand and jumped in my van and left the fair. <laughs> and then it got so bad, I had to stop the van in someone's driveway and I knocked on their door. Nobody answered. And I went to the next house and nobody answered. And the next house and nobody answered. Then the fourth house, people answered the door and they were drinking because they had just moved in and were celebrating. So they let, I said, can I please come to your basement? So I went to the basement and they took pictures of me and then the rain stopped and I went home. <laughs> and that is uh, our show tonight for... Well, that's a beautiful hand. Everybody up because I can't see you on my iPad. Here. Okay, introduce yourselves. I'm, I'm David Lynn from, from Rotunda Ins West. Yeah. I'm David from Innsbury, Massachusetts. And Tom from Florida, Orlando, Florida. <laughs> okay, and I'm Mickey, and they are some of our Sonic Boom Boom members. We did it in different form tonight. Hope you enjoyed it.
be back next month with the same people plus maybe some more in a different form. Anyway, stay tuned at um, 8.30. Have a team lesson. Woohoo!